Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to another episode of The Trainer Talk. Before we get into the topic, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Um, that way you can see all of our future videos and just to help us out with sharing our videos with more people. The more likes we get, the more likely other people like you will be able to see it. So the today's topic is gonna be the power of one more. And it's kind of a mindset topic because when you think about anything along your health and fitness journey. Last week, we talked about a lot of the inconveniences that we have to do to be fit and healthy, such as working out and eating healthy and meal prepping and drinking enough water, going to bed early, all these things that you don't really want to do. Those are required to achieve your goals and live that healthy and fit lifestyle that you want. So what we want to talk about is the power of one more basically means when you feel like you want to give up, you don't want to do this anymore, you're struggling with your workouts, maybe you're not seeing the progress that you were hoping, just do it for one more day. Put in one more workout, you know, make one more healthy meal, meal prep one more time, you know, fill up your water bottle one more time instead of going for the pop or something else that you want. Just try to convince yourself to do one more thing that's going to get you closer to your goals. And I actually think about this very often, just as an example, in very hard workouts. And these two can totally relate to this, but if we're in the middle of a really hard Metcon and I don't wanna do it, I really wanna stop, I will tell myself in my head repeatedly, just do one more rep, just pick the bar up one more time, just one more minute, like just keep going one more minute or one more time, one more rep, and then you keep saying that and you'll build off that momentum. And then all of a sudden you realize that you're able to finish. You're able to keep going and you're able to keep progressing. Yeah. So I'll let these guys kind of share their opinions on it and maybe give some examples of some situations that they've had as well. Yeah. So that's specifically with the reps. Like I've done that to myself so many different times. I'm like, okay, just one more. All right, one more. You can do one more. Mm -hmm. And just like taking it and breaking it down into such a little manageable thing. Like everyone can do one more rep. Everyone can have one more healthy meal. Everyone can, you know, read one more page of their book, you know, something different like that. And just breaking it down into something achievable. It gives you that little burst of dopamine, that little win of like, Oh, okay. I, I told myself, Hey, get one more rep. And I did it. And it fuels you get accomplished from that. Even though it's so tiny and it seems so insignificant, it starts the momentum mm -hmm. and you can also relate this. I thought of this while we were talking and you can relate it to like, when you say, Oh, just one more chip or just one more episode of Netflix. Right. And like one more episode turns into like five and it's the same thing, but you can use that to be something beneficial rather than something that's negative. So just saying, okay, just one more, one more workout or one more meal before I decide to give up on myself. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying one more bite or one more episode, like, you know how easy it is like once you just have one more just to keep going mm -hmm. so even though it comes from like a negative spot like people are probably more familiar with it in that aspect of like one more episode by transferring it into your health and fitness it actually makes it a little bit easier mm -hmm. and you can kind of use that momentum use that mind trick that you even play on yourself for your bad habits yeah. for now your good habits yeah, it's really funny because that's exactly what I was writing down before we started this. They were waiting for me to finish writing, but um, I kind of have a, the same take on it, but a little bit differently. Like I was thinking like, I personally, for me, like when I am in the middle of a really hard Metcon that I just want to quit, um, I do tell myself just do one more rep. But another thing that I do is I remind myself of my goals. And so a lot of, I mean, my goals are a little bit different now that I'm pregnant and stuff, but before that, my goals were I want to be good at CrossFit. Like I want to get better at Metcons, want to get better at my lifts. And so when I'm in the middle of a really hard Metcon, like I remind myself of that long-term goal. Like, yeah, these toes to bar suck. My forearms feel like they're going to fall off, but I'm the only way I'm going to get better at these is if I push and continue to do it. So it's kind of a hard thing because like when you have a long-term goal, you don't want to think about it so much that you get discouraged that you're not to that goal yet, but you also want to use it as a as a motivator to say, okay, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to be able to do a handstand walk. I want to be able to do a double under, whatever it is. And you have to remind myself, remind yourself, okay, how am I going to get to that goal? And it's not going to be by wishing that it was here in two days. It's going to be by putting in the work every single day 
to hit that goal. Yeah, I love that. I love that you brought that up because we just mentioned before we started the the video, like you want to think about your long term goals. Like, where do you want to be eventually? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's six months, a year. Maybe it's two years down the road. But you want to focus and live day to day. And yeah. we always say you want to become the person required to achieve that long term goal. And to become that person, you have to focus on the day in and day out habits required to become that person. The only way to do it is to adopt the healthy habits and do them consistently. And this topic is to help you stick to those habits because there's definitely going to be days where you don't want to go and do your workout. You don't want to eat an unhealthy meal while your coworkers are getting pizza. You know, you don't want to drink another bottle of water. You want to have a pop or something else. There's going to be times where that comes up. And what we want you to do is just tell yourself, just do it for one more day or do one more drink, one more workout. Um, and definitely thinking about that long-term goal and understand that by doing that one more action takes you an inch closer to that goal. And over time, you're just going to inch your way closer and closer until all of a sudden you achieve that goal. And the goal is secondary to the actions and everything that you've learned and implemented along the way. So many people just focus on their end goal, such as their weight loss. They want to lose 30 pounds and they weigh themselves on the scale every day. And they're just hoping that it just goes down like this mm -hmm. every single day. That's not really the case. And that's not where your focus should be. Your focus should be on, okay, what actions do I need to take? What habits do I need to do? Day, on, day in and day out to allow that scale to go down. That is secondary. What you really need to focus on is the habits. Okay? So you, if you want to change your life, you've got to change your habits. That's some, another thing that I shared this past week is focus your attention there. And they are hard. They're inconvenient. They're uncomfortable. But what we're trying to tell you guys is if you can just do it one thing at a time, one hour, you know, one day leads to one week, leads to one month, leads to one year, you're going to be able to succeed as long as you can stay consistent with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do want to just give credit to, um, I got this idea from a book that I just read by Ed Milet. And this was really a eye opener or really um, became a big part of his life because his father was an alcoholic for the first 15 years of his life. And basically it came down to his mom was going to either leave him or he had to get sober. So his dad said, son, I'm going to go get sober and um, be, the, be the dad that you deserve and be the husband that your mom deserves, things like that. And he said, how do, are you ever going to have a drink again? And he says, I don't know, but I know I'm going to stay sober for at least one more day. And he said that every single day. And for the remainder of his life, he was sober and he actually helped other people get sober by the same method. So you can apply it to anything in life. Like if you have a specific goal in your career or as a family member, you know, a spouse, a, a father, whatever, like do the actions required one step at a time. Do it, you know, one more day, one more hour, whatever it takes to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. Like one of my favorite quotes comes along with this is achieving the results comes as a side effect of becoming the person who it takes to get those. And focusing on those daily habits is how you're going to get there. It's not through the, you know, 30 day challenges where you think, oh, okay, I lost all this weight. I'm good. I'm fixed now. It's because those things you can white knuckle through them. Like so many people can have motivation for three, uh, you know, three weeks, six weeks, 30 days, all the little different challenges. So many people can just have the motivation, get through it. You know, they do everything, but then they fall off. Like so many, I mean, 90% of people typically will fall off after that initial challenge, which it's hard to see. But instead, if you look at the people that have stuck with it the longest, they might not be the people that had the biggest transformations, but they're the people who developed the habits. They started focusing on, okay, what do I need to do daily to become the person that I want to be, right? They're focusing more on like what they were doing daily, who they were, and you know, one thing that you can do is you can ask yourself, hey, is this what the person who would achieve X goal, is that what they would do? Is that what a healthy person would do? And I know we've talked about that before. And then, you know, 
basically separating your different decisions throughout the day of like, is this a smart decision that's going to take me towards my goals or is this going to take me away from my goals? And just asking yourself those things. And usually if you can have the space between, you know, if you're going to, you see something on the counter that you want to eat, like a, you have treats out on the counter, ask yourself, okay, is it going to take me towards my goals or away from my goals if I eat that donut right now? And it's a pretty simple question. It's like, no, it's not going to. So usually you can, if you have a couple of seconds at least to have that question pop into your head and have it for yourself on repeat, it becomes a habit itself of just asking yourself, am I making the choice that's going to take me to my goals? And then that's how it just ends up compounding over time by having that internal dialogue with yourself. Mm -hmm. And at that point you can say, I won't have that donut just for just one more day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then you could keep that going um, until you don't want it anymore. Because a lot of times people like, especially when they start a new diet plan or workout regimen, like, you know, it becomes really hard for the initial couple weeks. Um, it takes a while to get into that routine. But then all of a sudden you learn to enjoy it. Like we have so many people that love coming to fit camp and to class, mm -hmm. um, love coming to get their workout in. They enjoy their healthy meals they enjoy drinking their water it just takes getting past that initial kind of break-in period developing that habit um, and a very easy method is asking yourself is that going to take me to my goals maybe i can just go one more day without it one more day without it and that will help you guys mm -hmm. yeah go ahead, Kim. i think um the most important thing to remember is that like this is not something that once you hit your goal just stops like we want people to literally be living a healthy lifestyle for the rest of their, their lives. Just like Taylor was saying about Ed Milet's dad staying sober for his entire life. Like we want people to stay healthy for their entire life. So yes, it is good to have um, long-term goals, but you also need to not just like stop once you hit that goal like, right. and make your long-term goal, not like, Oh, I want to get fit for my wedding or I want to get fit for a cruise or a vacation. Um, because those are things that, okay, once you have your wedding, like, are you just done after that? Um, no, you want your long-term goal to be something deep, like something personal. Like, I want to be able to keep up with my grandkids. I want to be a better wife, mom, spouse, whatever it is. So um, just thinking about things like that when you are coming up with your long-term goals. Yeah. And speaking of which, like, I've had a lot of conversations with people, and a lot of the goals that I've been hearing is, like, I want to – you know, see my, I want to walk my kid down the aisle or I want to see my grandkids grow up and be able to play with them. And those are yeah. deep, powerful goals that you can set your sights on. And then basically what we're trying to do is break it down. Okay. What do you need to do every day mm -hmm. to become that person? And then, you know, you know, yes, we run challenges and stuff. Like we have six week challenges and in the past we've done 28 day challenges and those are meant to be the motivator mm -hmm. to get you get your foot in the door, kind of take the first step, but they're not meant to be a fix all. They're not a quick fix. We don't believe in that kind of thing. We're not trying to help you lose 30 pounds in 30 days. We're trying to help you learn at least one new habit and implement it into your life within that mm -hmm. time frame and make sure that you keep building on that. So a lot of our conversations, you know, we might start people with a six week challenge or with a, a nine week transformation, but that's just building the foundation to the person that they want to become. You know, they want to be the, become the person that's healthy and fit and a better dad or a better mom or a better spouse or be able to live a long, healthy lifestyle so that they can have the energy and the mobility and the strength to go and do things, whatever they want in life. Um, and all that takes is building a foundation and creating that life. So that's what we use challenges for as that motivator. So I'm glad you brought up like people want to get fit for their wedding and their cruise. It's just a motivator to get you in the gym, but you should also create that long-term goal. What do you really want to be? Who do you want to be for the rest of your life? Um, very, very good. Yeah. This might be a weird analogy, but I just thought of it. So in your fitness journey, it's like when you start dating someone new, right? Everything's super exciting and you're all motivated. And then after a while, the motivation's gone or the spark is gone in the relationship. So hopefully at that point, you're left with the habits or the commitment you've made to yourself or to the other person in the dating scenario. And that's when it you know, turns into a long-term relationship or a long-term 
lifestyle for your fitness journey. So those like two things that I just saw, was, they parallel each other really well. I think that is a very good That's analogy good because good. relationships after that first couple of years, like after the you know spark does wear off or whatever, it takes work yeah. to make each other happy and do what you need to do for each other, stuff like that. So that's a very good point because it takes discipline and you maybe do things you don't want to do, but you do it because you love the person. (laughs) And uh, so if you love yourself, you'll do the things that you need to do to take care of yourself. You know, I think a lot of people just don't put themselves high enough on their priority list. They're constantly thinking about other people and work. Um, and they don't prioritize themselves. But what they don't realize is, is if you are unhappy and you're not where you want to be and you're not satisfied, other people can feel that energy. Um, Everybody knows the person where, you know, you say hi to them and they're always in a bad mood and you just get this negative energy from them. It kind of depletes your energy and your mood. Like if you're going day in, day out, completely drained, lacking energy, stressed, unhappy, depressed, um, just not no confidence. It's, it's going to be spreading to everybody that you spend time with. Mm -hmm. And we see this all the time. Like when we work with clients that start making progress toward becoming a better person, immediately what we can tell is their mood is improved. Mm -hmm. They feel better. They feel confident. They're happier. They got more energy. Next thing they know, Oh, my, my, my husband wants to come in and start working out. He's noticed how much I've changed. My kids are working out at home and picking up stuff around the house, copying me. So it's like your energy transcends everybody around you, which is very, very cool too. So just focus on yourself and actually every other aspect of your life will get better. Mm -hmm. Um, Way off what our topic was about, but I think it goes hand in hand with it as well. That's a very good analogy. I like that. Good job. Anything else? That's all I got. Yeah. Okay. And on that nugget. So we'll end on that. And like I said, um, please like and subscribe um, just to help kind of share the videos. Hopefully more people will be able to see it and learn. Um, We do this video every single week just to try to provide knowledge to everybody and value because all three of our goals at the end of the day is to help as many people in our community live a healthier and happier lifestyle. And that's why we're here. And we plan on being here for a very, very long time. So we're not going to stop and we want to try to help as many people. So we could use your help, maybe share the video or send it to somebody that you think it could benefit. Um, you know, we've, I think this is uh, episode 86. So we've got um, a little over a year and a half now of doing these and we don't plan on stopping. So there's a lot of good information that you can learn from. Um, I actually made a post. You could literally watch every video we've made and probably become the person that you want to be and live the best life possible just from the information you learn from these videos. So we want to provide that value to you. Um, and in hopes, maybe work with you someday, whether it's training, coming to the gym, coaching classes, whatever it is, we want to help you get to where you want to be. So until then stay healthy and have an amazing day. See ya.